Hello and welcome to my channel. Yet another messy drawing with a lot of charcoal dust flying around. That's because it's a slightly darker scene with some darker values. It's a drawing of Gimli, the dwarf from the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, and it takes place in Moria on Balin's tomb. I'm going to show you how I did it. My main drawing tools are Kohinoor charcoal pencils, that's what I'm going to be working with. And it's a very interesting composition uh, where I had to use a number of different reference photos or references to put this together. The scene is based on the scene from the movie The Fellowship of the Ring where Gimli jumps onto Balin's tomb with two axes ready to fight off the incoming orcs. Um, in addition to that I also used some other pictures like uh, images of plastic figurines of Gimli and I found those useful but I had to improvise ultimately I had to make some changes and I had to be a little bit creative in order to put something together that was that was to my liking for the background, I used a combination of charcoal powder and my charcoal pencil. And for blending, I used a variety of blending tools, for, but for the larger areas, I mostly use my finger. Now, there are going to be some details in the background, and I'm going to have some light sources there as well. But I can't really be bothered with that right now. First, I'm going to establish these larger contrasts and go around the edges of my main subject and later I can put in some details into that background so first I'm going to shade the background and take care of that and later later I will define some of those details I'm working around the edges carefully and once I uh, filled in the top right part, uh, the top left part of the drawing, because I normally work from left to right and from top to bottom, I moved on to Gimli's helmet. And this is a part of the drawing where I'm going to have to have a lot of contrast and clean edges because the light source is coming from above and the helmet is made out of metal so that it's going to have some reflective lighter areas and some darker areas and I need a clean edge and a contrast there now the scene takes place in the main chamber in the mines of Moria and there are some light sources there they're coming from the openings on the walls above and I'm mostly going to try to stay consistent with those light sources but I'm going to have to take some artistic license of course because there are some details that I want to show which otherwise probably wouldn't be visible or wouldn't be quite as clear if I were to stay completely consistent with my light source because it would be a very dark scene obviously so I want to show Gimli's face a little bit more, so I'm going to have to use fewer shadows there. So I am improvising a little bit, but I do have a reason for it, and I'm mostly going to try to stay consistent with the light source so that the scene makes sense. When I work around the edges of my main subject, I normally use tortillions because those areas require a little bit more accuracy and precision. Now I did the drawing of Gimli's facial details with a harder pencil, but other than, that, other than that I did most of the work with a soft charcoal pencil. And I wanted to capture Gimli's expression here. My main problem was the fact that because I have to show the whole scene, I have to show the background and the tomb, I knew that his face was going to be small, so the challenge was to capture his facial expression. And I tried to capture that expression and that mood from the movie where he is both angry and desperate but also determined to fight. 
because he just found out that the entire dwarf colony was destroyed, that his relative and friend Palin was killed. And for him it's a very sad moment, but he is also ready to fight. He says there is one more dwarf in Moria who still draws breath. And I think this is one of the best scenes in the movie because uh, the movie did a lot of improvising and deviated from from the plot every now and then but in some parts of the movie they managed to capture the atmosphere from the book and this I believe was one of those scenes and in this scene Gimli was also portrayed as he was in the book because for for a good part of the movie, Gimli was a bit of a comical character, which I didn't really like. He's much more of a heroic character in the, in the book. So this was much more similar to Gimli's character in the actual book. His beard and mustache are kind of complex, with some braiding and stuff. But I'm going to simplify that as well. Some of it is going to be in the shadow. I'm just going to put enough detail to give the viewer some suggestions of shapes and leave it at that. And I'm going to do the same thing with his gear, his armor and clothes. Here and there I'm just going to put in some suggestions of some details, some uh, dwarven marks and insignia. I don't really need to put in all of the details because there are other things that I'm focusing on. He's holding two axes and I need to have a clean edge around them as well. So I'm cleaning that up using a tutillion. I can't blend all of it with my finger because your finger is a great blending tool but it lacks precision. So I have to supplement that with a uh, with a tutillion and some other blending tools. Um, under his uh, leather armor and his clothes, he also has some sort of a chainmail tunic or something. I'm just going to create some suggestions of that as well. Again, I'm not going to draw every single detail. And here I added a bit more contrast so that his beard would really stand out. And those braids as well. And uh, now I'm just going to use a charcoal pencil to define some of the other uh, some of the other lines here, darker lines that will kind of define the shape and the outline. Basically what I wanted to have is, I wanted to have something that kind of looks like a scene from the movie. I wanted him standing on the tomb, uh, with the book behind him. Um, and now I'm drawing some indications of the chainmail tunic. I'm not going to overdo it, obviously just a few suggestions will do. Uh, the book was a record of the things that happened since the dwarves came to Moria and founded their colony and in it Gandalf found, found out what happened uh, that Balin was killed one day by an arrow and, uh, these events uh, take place after the events in Hobbit because after Hobbit Balin went to try and start a colony in Moria which used to be a great dwarven underground city and mine as well and for a while things went well but eventually eventually uh, they found out that there were goblin, goblins and worse things. 
So I'm drawing some indications of some patterns on his armor, but like I said, I can't really make all of them out in my reference, nor do, do I care to draw every single detail. That's not really particularly important to me. But I do want this clean edge around the X and around the left edge of his arm and shoulders because uh, that's a part of his body that's catching light from above so I want it a lot lighter than the rest of the body. I need to try to capture that contrast between the between the parts of the body and equipment which are facing towards the light source and those which are in the shadow because it's a very dark scene and the dark areas are going to be pretty dark and the light areas are going to be a lot lighter. So lots of contrast in this scene and as long as I can capture that contrast and as long as I can stay mostly consistent with my light source I think this is going to look good because I am doing a lot of improvising here and uh, when you're doing things like that there's always a chance that things might go wrong. It's always easier when you have a single clean reference photo. Things are a lot simpler and it's easier to create a good drawing out of that but when you have to make things up and when you have to improvise that's when uh, you have to push yourself a little bit more. So I'm working around the left edge of his body and just finishing the rest of that background on that side. At the bottom of the tomb I also want a skeleton of one of the dead dwarves just to add to, add to the atmosphere and on the floor I'm just going to have some rubble and maybe some paper and things like that just to indicate that uh, the place was raided by orcs. And my camera wasn't adjusted properly here so you can't see what I'm doing at the bottom but I'm basically shading a bit of the floor and uh, drawing some indications of the rest of that skeleton's body. There's going to be a bit of shadow here under uh, under his book, under this book, and under his body. Uh, but I'm also going to have to work around those details to add another bit of darker area here. And I also want a lot of shadow in the middle part of his body because his limbs are kind of and the head are kind of sticking out and are catching more light from the light source while the middle part, middle part of his body is going to be darker because it's kind of be, going to be hidden in the shadow so I'm going to make those parts of the body a little bit darker so I'm kind of playing around with those contrasts between the details uh, between the parts of the body which are more defined and those which are more abstract because uh, they're more in the shadow and I am trying to use that to my advantage because that's also a way for me to attract the viewer's attention. I can focus the viewer's attention on those parts of the drawing which uh, are more defined, have more details and more texture and I can draw the focus away from those details which are kind of blurred out or more in the shadow. So I'm going to try to use that difference or that contrast between the well-defined shapes and the more abstract shapes as well as the lighter shapes and really dark shapes to capture the attention of the viewer but also to sell this uh, scene as a realistic one because, uh, because of all the shadows and the contrast and the range of value which will hopefully give my drawing depth and volume. Um, I'm drawing some details on his boots. I am simplifying things a little bit. I mean if you study the high-res reference photos of some um, I don't know figurines of Gimli which can be found on the internet there are lots more, a lot more details there but I don't really feel like including all of those. That's not really my priority here. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to create an illusion of detail and kind of just draw enough detail to entertain the eye of the viewer to trick them that they're looking at something that's really, really detailed. But 
I'm mostly going to focus on these contrasts and um, because I also love movement movement is one of my favorite things in drawing I'm really trying to capture this position of his body now that I've covered the background it's time to think about the light sources a little bit so like I said in this chamber there are some openings on the roof or on the ceiling rather whatever it is and I want the light to be coming from there so I started by cleaning up some parts of the background by lifting up a little bit of charcoal and I do that by cleaning up cleaning my brush and then dragging it and then it lifts up a little bit of charcoal now when I want to lift up, lift up a little bit more I just uh, use q-tips and I lift up a little bit of charcoal and I create these sun rays basically rays of light which are coming through I'm gonna have them here on the left but I'm also gonna add some light on the other side as well uh, I also use my eraser a little bit at the top but I generally avoided using an eraser for the background much because the eraser would create um, stronger lines uh, and maybe even a little bit of texture so I wanted the background to be kind of blurry and I wanted really smooth transitions as you can see I didn't want to have any white lines I just wanted to make it look like the light is coming through and just making some parts of the background a little bit lighter so that it looks like actual rays of light coming in and I also have some indications of pillars and some other shapes in the background but it's all kind of undefined and that's what I was talking about these abstract shapes or undefined shapes I want very little texture and very little actual shapes in that part of the drawing I'm just uh, gonna dab a little bit here and there with my q-tips and my fingers to lift up a little bit of charcoal and maybe make some indications of some shapes in the darkness maybe some rubble maybe some other pillars maybe some other shapes um, just so that I could make it look like there's something in the background but I don't really need to define it very well and I don't really want to define it very well because um, I need those to stay blurry and I want the objects in the foreground to be well defined and to draw the attention of the viewer. I added an arrow stuck in the in the armor and the body of this uh, dwarven skeleton here at the bottom like maybe the, he was killed by orcs and I'm also going to clean up the upper edge of his skull so that there is a lot of contrast between the skull and the and the background and you can see what I'm going with the background now from the left side of the background you can see that I I have some light coming through uh, the the top part of um, Gimli's body is catching that light especially on the left side I'm going to do a, a slightly different thing on the right side because uh, there is a little bit of light on the right side I want this X which is further away from the light source to a little bit to be a little bit darker so the X on the left is lighter and it's catching left from a uh, light from the light source but I'm going to do the opposite on the other side I'm going to have this X a little bit darker and the X is going to be darker than the background so the the X on the left stands out against the background because it's lighter than the background and the X on the right is going to stand out against the background because it's darker than the background I'm going to have some highlights on it as well to make it more three-dimensional but I think uh, this was a nice touch because it allowed me uh, to create more depth in my drawing but also to stay more consistent with the lighting and the light sources in my uh, in my scene and you can see how uh, we have some indications of a pillar on the right maybe some structures I don't really need to define anything I'm gonna make this part of uh, Gimli's body here around the waist also a little bit darker because like I said the limbs are kind of sticking out 
and they're catching more light but some other parts of the body which are facing away from that light source I'm going to make them really dark and less defined obviously Recently I did that drawing of Aragorn, another dark scene in charcoal. Charcoal is perfect for these scenes where there are a lot of dark areas and when you, where you need to make these smooth transitions between dark areas and light areas. These effects would be very, very difficult to pull uh, with some other medium. I'm going to draw some highlights with a pencil eraser on, on the other X as well. And by the way, I'm using a Kohinoor pencil eraser. For these details so I'm basically just erasing a little bit of charcoal I didn't want to use that eraser for those rays of light because then those lines would be just too clean and too well defined and needed something a little bit softer and a little bit more blurry and that's why lifting up charcoal was such a good idea it produced just the effect that I wanted to produce I'm going to make this arm a little bit darker with the hand a bit lighter because it's kind of sticking out but the part of the hand or the part of the, uh, the, the that fist or those knuckles which are facing away from the light source I'm going to make them a bit darker I am simplifying some of the details on the red leather armor of his and just uh, trying to stay focused on the on the larger contrasts on the larger details So like I said recently I did that drawing of Aragorn, I'm going to put the link in the end screen if you want to check out that as well. But I did a lot of other drawings uh, inspired by either the movies or the books. And I hope that you'll check them out, especially if, you are, if you're a Tolkien fan. But uh, if, even if you're not, I think uh, they're just interesting from the perspective of somebody who likes to draw because there are, there are a lot of interesting things in this drawing, especially uh, from the perspective of the, um, of the composition and the lighting. These things are very interesting in this drawing and it was a, a bit of a challenging drawing in that respect. I'm moving on to the tomb. I have to shade around it and then, then I'm going to shade the tomb itself. Uh, the part of the tomb with it that's facing towards us and downward is going to be darker. There's going to be some, some shadows down below. I'm also going to try to add some texture to the tomb because it's made out of stone. So I'm going to have to try to imitate the surface that kind of looks like... I don't know. It kind of looks like stone. A little bit rough with a bit of damage here and there maybe some cracks as a result of either some battle or things like that I'm just adding more detail to the skeleton here at the bottom it, kind of, it looks kind of gruesome but I thought that it would be a good detail to add to the scene I'm defining the edges of this tomb cleaning them up a little bit, enhancing the contrast there, also adding a few cracks in the stone. I added some suggestions of uh, some stones on the ground, maybe some rubble, maybe some other objects. I don't really need to define every single one of them. A few cracks here and there and a bit more shading just to make those areas which are further away from the light source a bit darker and to try to make that whole thing a bit more three-dimensional so that both Gimli and the other objects in the foreground can pop out of that dark background and I'm gonna keep doing the same thing with the background that I did on the left side I'm gonna keep it kind of in the dark and undefined just so that it wouldn't be too distracting sometimes um, sometimes these undefined shapes really help a lot with the realism because when you push yourself to put every single detail in the background you can actually make the drawing look a lot worse uh, whereas when you simplify and approximate certain things and you allow some other things to stand out that really improves the overall appearance of the drawing. <clears throat> I 
just working around the edges of this tomb because it's made out of cut stone it, it needs to have some clean edges apart from those which are cracked and damaged and notice that I also added some lighter details to those cracks as well to make them more three-dimensional so that those parts of those cracks which are facing up towards the light source are a little bit lighter and now I'm just uh, creating some indications of some lighter shapes in the background again nothing specific nothing that needs to be too well defined maybe maybe some stones maybe some rubble maybe even some steps in the background maybe maybe some other tombs or pieces of tomb maybe even some bodies maybe some equipment some papers documents from the book whatever I'm just gonna blur that a little bit with a brush blur all of those areas which which I want to remain a little bit less defined and leave those areas where I want more contrast and more texture and this contrast between the areas which are well defined and which have a lot of texture and those which are kind of blurry is probably going to be one of the most important things for this drawing. I used a pencil eraser to erase or write my signature in the lower right corner and I'm just putting down some finishing touches before I spray everything with some fixative naturally I always use a lot of fixative with charcoal but this is especially the case with drawings that have as much charcoal as this one I'm just refining the shadow and I'm also going to make these edges of the book a little bit thicker and I'm going to remove this tape and fill in these areas to wrap things up I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Most of the views come from people who aren't subscribed, so feel free to subscribe. Also give me a like and comment. That means a lot for my channel. If you want to see longer videos, you can always go and check out my Patreon. Don't forget to check out my other Lord of the Rings or Tolkien inspired drawings. And I do hope you enjoyed this one. It's an interesting looking scene, a little bit violent. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.